Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Thank you, Dan Hurst. And Dan is not with us today, but I'm here with Mark Halleck. Thank hey. you, Mark, for being with us. We are at the Linwood Baptist Church in downtown Linwood, Kansas. Hopefully you can hear us over all the traffic noise and the jet. I love, I love that you say downtown. <laughs> I, you said that a few times. I have. Now, what exactly qualifies as downtown? Right here, we are in downtown. We are, the, we we, are it. We are it, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've got a, our... our uh, our city aquarium uh, is really, <laughs> it's really a minnow bucket. Hey, listen, and, tell these uh, guys about the bell. The bell? We do have a church bell here. I mean, that's quite the a bell. bell. The, the church, this church was, was uh, built in 1911, and it's burned down four times, as they all do. <laughs> so this particular version of the church was built in the 1960s. But the bell has survived all of the flowers. Uh, fi- fires. Fires. Fires? It's, a, it's an incredible bell. Right in the middle it of is. town. It's an incredible bell, a big, huge brass bell. And uh, we took it down and set it off and had it all cleaned up and fixed. And then we built a new new tower for it. We have it electrified so that you can ring it from inside the church. And so we ring it every Sunday morning before church and after church. And every time I basically feel like ringing it, we ring it. <laughs> and you can hear it all over town. Do the kids like? Do the kids all want to ring it? Yes, they all want to ring the bell. They all want to ring it. But they can't because I get to do it. Because you get to do it. It's your job. It's my job. No, I love the church bell. It's great. So we do have a bell here in this church in downtown. Linwood is a population of 400 people. So, uh, and uh, 400 people and uh, uh, 283 cats and 462 dogs, actually, I think, something like that. Anyway. There's a, hey, and another interesting thing is a tornado went through here. Yeah, that's, that is true. Two years ago. About four years ago, a Category 4 tornado. Man, that's a big one. That's a biggie. Uh, took out part of the town here, and uh, it was a really, really tragic time, but uh, it's been rebuilt. And some new homes, some new people, and Be- some yeah, new beautiful. life. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, yeah, yeah looks it's great. great. Hey, thank you for being with us here. This is Revitalize and Replant, in case you don't know that. And trust me, it gets a lot better the longer you listen to it, all right? So uh, we had a slow start here, but we're going to bounce right back, and we're going to have a great finish. We need right? to come back I, here. That's just like all of my sermons. They all have a slow start <laughs> and even worse finish is how they work. So today we're going to talk about the three dangers of being crazy busy. And we want to give congratulations to Kevin D. Young. I know he listens to this podcast every every day. So thank you, Kevin, for <laughs> Thanks, helping Kevin. us with it. He sent this into our podcast. We're going to actually put this on the show notes. This is an article that Kevin D. Young wrote on the dangers of being busy. And that's true. Yeah. I mean, oftentimes, pastors, you equate busyness with productivity. I got news for you. Busyness does not equate to productivity. Uh, you can stay very, very busy and get very little done. You can mm. stay very, very busy and weaken your heart spiritually, weaken your family. Uh, man, you've got to really look at that. So let's look at three things, Mark. Give us the first yeah, 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 the yeah. first danger that busyness has. That's right. The first danger is that busyness can ruin our joy. Really? Can ruin our joy. Yeah. And he, here's what he says. He says, this is the most immediate and obvious spiritual threat. As Christians, our lives should be marked by, as we know, joy, taste like joy, be filled with the fullness of joy. Busyness attacks all that, attacks all that. And so I think this is true. I'm just reflecting on my own life. And this is so true, man. It's like when I'm busy, and I think a lot of people think busyness will actually produce more fulfillment when in some ways it it can just suck the joy right out of you. Let's talk for a minute about busyness. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's always things to do, right? You get to the end of every day and there's things left undone. You go to bed at night and your mind, you threw all the things I should have done today that I have to do tomorrow. I mean, including not only ministry things, but personal things, family things, financial things, things for your car. You got to fix that refrigerator. It never ends. It just never ends. And if you're not careful, You'll just be so busy with the things that never end mm. that you you're right. You have no room for joy or what what mm-hmm. my what Kevin talks about here, and it's really an important word. You ready? Write this word down. You have no margin. Mm. You if you yeah. work out past the margins and yeah. you're you're working completely off to the edge of the page, mm-hmm. 
You've got no margin for anything. Right. You've got no margin to sit and think about the Lord. You've got no margin to enjoy your children, enjoy your wife, yep. enjoy a hobby, yep. enjoy life. You've, you, you've got no margin if, if the Lord brings something to you to do that day, but you're so busy, you've got no margin. I, I just think it's really important to understand staying constantly busy. Yeah. I agree. It robs us of our joy, and it also robs us of any margin that we might have that would allow us to do something that would be beneficial that we haven't planned to do. Okay, so let me ask you this. So when you look at your life, what, how do you create margin when, for your own, for yourself, and, and therefore fuel joy yeah, that I comes use, through doing, do you, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Like, practically. I, I generally sleep in until about 10. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you go to bed? <laughs> I, I, I go to bed about nine p.m. I sleep until about ten. But I do well, take, do but I do take a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> years ago, years ago. Let me just say that I can be busy at times, but this is probably not my biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, all right, yeah. I am not a Type A workaholic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have the other issue. All right. I'm That's the a kid, good point. It can go I, to two extremes. I am, I'm the kid in school. Yep. Literally, I kept getting notes sent home and phone calls to my parents that Mark is daydreaming. He's looking <laughs> outside the window. He's not doing his assignments. <laughs> I only did those assignments that I enjoyed doing. Yeah. If I didn't enjoy doing them, you didn't do I them. ain't doing it. And, and <laughs> so, so I have to struggle with the other end of it. Yeah, I had yeah, a, yeah. my first boss, I was working for this association in North Atlanta. His name was Leonard King, and he was from the North Mountains of Georgia. And Leonard, <laughs> my dad asked, he said, well, how's my son doing? And Leonard said, well... Harry, he's doing real well. Most days he gets in by 10 and he stays clear through to lunch. <laughs> I can so, imagine your dad's so, response. Yeah, so busyness yeah. is probably not my biggest yeah, issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is for some people. Yeah, it people is. People who feel it like is. if I'm not working every moment of the day, yep. then I'm, I'm slacking off. Yeah. Are you, you're like that. Well, yeah, I tend to be more, I'm more wired that way. That's right. And, and in fact, I found... And the problem is I, I love to be busy. I, 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 I can deal with guilt and feel when I, you know, I don't rest very well. And so I've had to really learn that. It's also why you need accountability. I think you need other leaders in your life, in your church, who can just say, hey, listen, we, you need to take some time See, off. You're a very, you know? <laughs> very extroverted person. You well, love yeah, to be around that's people. True, that's true. And I'm an introverted person. And, you That's know, someone point. said, you know, what do you, what do you like in life, Mark? And I say, I, 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 I value solitude. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be alone. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think there is a difference. I think if you're a people person, yeah. not going person, That's true. you feed off people, that energy yeah. you need. Yep. And you have a tendency to be overworked and stay too busy. And what we mean by too busy is you, you, you don't allow any time in your day mm -hmm. for rest, yeah. for contemplation, for something that might come up you're not planning on, yeah, you don't have any margin. Yep. And so I want to encourage you to have margin because without that, it can absolutely ruin your joy. Yep. All right? That's good. That's number one. That's the first one. Well, I like this, though. I do want yeah, to say yeah. this. Yeah, please. He does say most of us fall in predict into a predictable pattern. We start to get overwhelmed by one or two projects. Then we feel crushed by the daily grind. Then we despair, ever feeling at peace again. And we swear something's going to change. And then two weeks later, when life is a little more bearable, we forget about that oath and we start that cycle all over again. Mm -hmm. So what I like what he says. You go, you realize, okay, I can't keep doing this. So we stop for a week or two. Yep. Yep. But then we go right back to those old yep. habits of overworking ourselves, overpromising ourselves, yep. and overplanning ourselves. Be cautious about that. Okay, number two. Okay, number two. The second danger is the busyness can rob our hearts. Of joy, of contentment, yep. of love of Christ. You know, John Calvin says the human heart is a thick forest of thorns. Mm. And Jesus names two in particular. First, he labels the cares of the world uh, there in Mark 4, 19. Yep. I mean, I, I, I really, I, I think what happens is the cares of the world, the worries of the world, they can, they can just weigh down on us so much that we lose the joy of being a believer. We lose mm. the joy of, of having Christ. Uh, 
I, I really think in a lot of ways, you know, this, that was the first. The second one is related to the first. Jesus says that the work of the word is swallowed up by the desire for other things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, after a while, we ought to be spending more time in his word, but we spend too much time yeah. in things that don't matter. Yeah. And it robs us of our joy. Amen. Our, okay, here's what I'm trying to say. If you're out there listening saying, what in the world is Clifton trying to say? Then that's what you would say most Sundays when you heard me preach. <laughs> but here's, if, by the way, if the pastor says, here's what I'm trying to say, you know he's struggling, right? <laughs> you never, you know, you would never hear Martin not, Lloyd-Jones say, <laughs> Martin Lloyd-Jones is not going to say, here's what I'm trying to say. That would not happen. So here's what I'm trying to, okay. here's what I'm trying to say. Here's what you're trying to say. Okay? You can stay so busy doing so many things that are good that you don't have time to spend time in his word and your joy mm. does not come in busyness, Martha. Yeah. Your joy comes in at the feet of Jesus, Mary. Yeah. You think we would learn that, yeah, that's but right. we don't. That's right. Busyness, like Martha's busyness, robs us of our joy. And pastor, if you do not find joy in your daily ministry, which we all are there at times, yep. that is a huge red flag that says, wait yep. a minute, take a step back. Because your joy is found in Christ, it's found at His feet, it's found in His Word. You're yep. not spending right. enough time there. You're spending too much time with the busyness. That's right. And here's the thing, too. If you're, if you're wired more like I am, kind of that type A, listen, if you don't control your schedule, everybody else will. Mm. Which means this. You're not going to be able, if you don't create the margin, if you don't figure out your schedule to create time just to, to sit at the feet of Jesus. Right. You know, because listen, man, I mean, nobody's going to be encouraging you pr- probably to do that. Everybody's going to want something from you. You have to, in a sense, be selfish with that and say, listen, you know, I'm setting a meeting time with Jesus in the same way I would set a meeting time with a person in our church or whatever it might be. And so my practical encouragement is, uh, are you controlling your schedule? And if not, what are you going to do to make sure you do take control of your schedule and therefore, and whether you're talking time with your, you know, having a date night every week with your, your wife or your kids or time with the Lord, whatever it might be, you've got to, you have to lead yourself. This is self-leadership stuff that we've got to grow in. And let's talk about your church members, Pastor. Now let's move from you to your church members, because this is true of your church members. Absolutely. Your church members, they can be so busy doing the work of the church oh, and man. not the work of the Lord that it can ruin their joy. Also, they can be so busy doing just the things of life rather than focusing on Christ. This is really good. Take a listen to what, what Kevin writes. This is so good. Jesus knows what he's talking about when it comes to being busy. As much as we pray against the devil and pray for the persecuted church, Jesus thinking the greater threat to the gospel, it could be just sheer exhaustion. Mm. Now, that seems odd when you think on it, but listen to me. Think about how many of your people just don't have any time left in their life. Yeah. They just go nonstop. They're taking one kid to a soccer game, another kid to this event. They're working two jobs. They've got to clean the house. They've got to go get the cat, kit litter, catty litter, kit litter, kitty litter, kitty litter. They've got to take the dog to the vet. they got a dentist appointment. I mean... After a while, there's no time left. Just sheer exhaustion. I love this. He said, how many sermons that were preached have been stripped by their power through lavish dinner preparations and professional football? In Mm -hmm. other words, you know, we work really hard at providing a great meal on Sunday or watching the game, and we're so busy doing that, we don't even have time to think and contemplate Mm -hmm. on the sermon that we just heard. Or how many moments of pain are wasted because we never sit still long enough to learn from them? Mm. Or how many times has private and family worship been crowded out by a school project that has to be done or a soccer game or Mm -hmm. a practice that has to be made? We need to guard our hearts. The seed of God's word won't grow to fullness without pruning. And that pruning is is rest, Mm. quiet, and calm. Mm. Guys, I, I didn't read that very well, but go back and look at it on our show notes you need to help your people find a way to rest in their life Mm. because without that room to rest, they don't have room to grow. And the adversary knows that and he will fill their life up. I guarantee you, you stop any family in your church and you say, you all busy. They're all going to say, Oh man, we are so busy. That's right. They need some time to not be busy and don't make them feel guilty. Here's the thing. Yes. I see pastors and hear about pastors say, well, 
you know, they're, they don't give us, they're, they're doing all this other stuff. I mean, is church really a priority? Here's what I would say. First of all, that's not going to change anybody's heart. Right. <laughs> um, grace is going to change their hearts. But I think you've got to understand, I think a lot of folks, man, are doing the best they can in a world that's crazy busy. And so what you've got to do is shepherd them through it with grace, uh, with, with leadership. But I'm telling you, the worst thing you can do is be the guy from the pulpit or wherever that's making your people feel even more guilty. Right. Because the reality is they feel it, man. They're trying to figure out how to be a good parent and how to have a good marriage and all these things. So don't be more of a burden And to them. we talked about this in a previous podcast. We can model for our people that the church should do less but do it better. Do it better. We yeah. don't need to be busy. I go to some churches, guys. Yeah. I open up the bulletin. And I look at everything you're doing that week, and I'm already tired. I mean, <laughs> my reading kid, the bulletin. how much, I mean, really? Really? We got, first of all, maybe you don't need to put every single thing you do in the bulletin. But it's like, really? This is just one week? As though it's yeah. almost bragging. Yeah. Look how much we do. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be yeah. better to say, let's come together and make much of Jesus once a week in worship? Let's make sure we get together in some group during the mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. And then let's be Christians as we live our That's lives. Right in our community and let's give people margin to do that i mean the idea that we've got to be busy at the church all the time so okay back to what we're talking about the dangers of being busy by kevin kevin d young number one busyness can ruin your joy number two Mm -hmm. it can rob your heart and that means rob it of the love of the gospel rob it of of the word it can just rob your heart but number three busyness can cover up the rot in our souls Oh, man. Now, we say all the time when it comes to dying churches that dying churches anesthetize the pain of death with an overabundance of activity Mm -hmm. and maintaining with great passion things that no longer work. In other words, as long as we're busy, we're not dying. And that's and really what's behind it, isn't it? It's it is a, what's behind it. It's almost a false it. sense of, hey, we're okay here. We're still doing we stuff. We still meet on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. We still have deacons yep. meetings, first trustee meetings, finance committee meetings. We, we're not, you know, maybe we don't have as many people as we used to, but yeah. we're still staying busy. Yeah. And the same kind of thing in your own personal life. Busyness can cover up the sin and the rot because you're never taking time to sit along with the Lord, mm-hmm. to get into his word, yep. to calmly be in prayer, to contemplate your life, mm. because why? We're just so busy. Yep. We work from sun up to sundown. We never have any downtime. And if you're not careful living a life like that, you will find yourself running more and more into sin and less and less coming to the place where you are contemplating that yeah. sin, repenting of that sin, being remorseful for that sin. Man, that's a really good point. I mean, when it comes to soul caring for your soul, prayer, repenting of sin, Praying with David, Lord, search my heart, see if there's any wicked way in me. None of that happens when you're living a hectic life and a busy life. And so, and so the a walk with Jesus takes solitude. It takes time. It takes margin. It takes the opposite of busy. And and so again, this is where we need friends. We need others who can encourage us in this, who can hold us accountable in this. But but I think you know I think of what Piper says. It is a fight for your soul, man. I mean, this yeah. is like this isn't just oh, it would be nice if I wasn't so busy. No, listen, Satan wants to keep you busy and distracted oh, from, listen. from pursuing the, the joy of your life, which check is the out, Lord. Check out this quote. Check this quote out, uh, Tim Crater. In an article by the New York Times, check this out. Busyness serves as a kind of existential reassurance, a hedge toward and against emptiness. Mm. Busyness serves as a kind of existential existential. reassurance, a hedge against emptiness. In other words... Mm. My life must have meaning because I'm busy. Dude, because he goes on, he says, obviously your life cannot possibly be silly or trivial or meaningless if you are so busy, completely booked, in demand every hour of the day. And it says the greatest danger with busyness is that there may be greater dangers you never have time to consider. And busyness does not mean you're a faithful or a fruitful Christian. Boy, that's true. It only means you're busy like everyone else. And like everyone else, your joy, your heart, and your soul are in danger. We need the Word of God to set us free. We need biblical wisdom to set us straight. We need the great physician to heal our overscheduled souls. 
And we can only do that, Mr. Halleck, yep. if we make an appointment to do it. Yep. And we create margin in our lives to do it. Amen. Amen. Stay away from unnecessary busyness. Yep. That's a good word for all of us. In your life and in the life of your church. So I want you to right now sit down and write five things you're not going to do next week as long as one of them is not taking this podcast off of your list. <laughs> you need to be busy by listening to this podcast. This is important. Everything else, if you've got other podcasts you listen to, you can take those off. That'll save you some time, but you've got to hang on to this one. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.